We have finally come to the most debated topic in a van build, but it was inevitable. In part one, I explained how and why I'm using Frost King on the walls as pre-insulation, and today I'll be insulating the walls with Havelock wool. I'm actually working on a super in-depth video comparing the most popular choices of insulation to explain why I chose Havelock, but today I just want to focus on the install. Usually Havelock wool is installed with twine or tape, but I think I found a new better way. And it's actually going to stop the wool from falling or sagging on your walls over time and leaving uninsulated gaps. All right, so I do plan on still installing Frost King on these sections, but there's a method to my madness and I have an idea, which is always a dangerous thing to say. I usually like to only do things in my van build that have been tried and tested and proven to work, but there's a big complaint about Havelock wool, which is people are concerned that behind the wall, it will just kind of fall down. And even with like, you know, having string up here to hold it against or having tape that behind the wall, once the wall is up, that it will just still fall and crumple and you'll have like an empty space here. And I get that. I wish before I sold my last van that I had, I pulled one wall down just to see if that's really what's happening or not. But honestly, it makes a lot of sense and I really do think it could be happening. Okay, hear me out. Someone had to be a guinea pig for this and it's me, so. This is actually a method you may have seen used before, but usually it's on rigid foam board insulation installs. Here's the concept. I have these really sharp tools. So obviously sharp tool is not the best way to describe these, not very searchable on Amazon, but these are two and a half inch perforated insulation pins from Amazon and I bought a set of a hundred for about $35. And I'm going to put it up against the wall and the Havelock wool is gonna go onto this and then I'll put something to cover the sharp part. That way it's not like the casket from Despicable Me or something. <laughs> I ain't trying to murder anybody in this van. So the concept is hopefully unlike tape that won't, you know, unstick eventually or, you know, string where it's not really touching it. And people kind of always say, I gotta get the walls up right away, that way it stays up. And I'm like, how is the wall gonna make it stay up? Because you cannot shove Havelock wool in, which I'm sure I'll talk about at some point in this video about how you can't like just jam pack it in. Like that's not good for it. It's gonna actually make it not as efficient and as good as its job. So I don't want to do that. And in order to not do that, we're going to try this. Just a reminder, I'm not a professional. I'm just a DIYer in a driveway, making stuff up as I go. My set of 100 pins was just enough to do all the walls and doors. I used leftover Reflectix tape to adhere these to the wall, but any tape or adhesive would do. The two inches was just the right size for these upper cavities, but I did wish I had shorter ones for the sliding door and longer ones for the middle sections where the gap is three and a half inches. I ended up discovering the Reflectix tape ironically doesn't stay taped well to the Frost King once you try to get it to hold any weight. But during one of my Patreon live streams, someone actually suggested using a glue adhesive, which would definitely work, but personally, I just don't have the patience to wait for the glue to dry, but it definitely would stop my concern that these pins are creating a thermal bridge of sorts and the glue would create a thermal break between the two surfaces. In the end, I just put the pins under the Frost King in the other sections, which made me feel super confident because these pins will not be going anywhere. So I think I'm gonna go with this method up here and this method down here just because this is already installed and this isn't. Now, in order to figure out how far apart I wanna place the pins, I wanted to measure a single piece of the Havelock wool. So it is time to open the first box. In total for my full van build, I used four boxes and it was the perfect amount to do my entire 159 wheelbase Pro Master van. I think I actually have one exact piece left over in the end from the fourth box. And I'll put a total breakdown of the costs and shipping and all the materials I used in the description. One of the biggest discussions around Havelock wool is the smell. How it smells like a barnyard or like a sheep, well, that is because it is made from sheep's wool. The smell is so strong that my dog actually thought it was an actual sheep and was scared of the box. What are you doing, Coda? Being submissive to the animal. <laughs> it's a sheep! <laughs> <laughs> you spoke too loud and spooked her. I guess think it's some kind of big animal. Look how big it is. <laughs> Look how big that animal is. <laughs> Sorry, Coda. So I can confidently say from my experience, this does not have a long lasting smell, but yes, when you first open it, it definitely is like a little bit like being punched in the face with a sheep. 
but then the smell gets lighter but remains for the first day or two and then it just kind of disappears and you never think about it again. I'm just showing you this clip for this long because I thought my nails looked really good, but unfortunately, ironically, this is what my hands looked like at the end of this project. So when you get the box, it is all squished and compact in here pretty tight, so I tried to remove as many pieces as I could early to let them breathe and expand. But honestly, they didn't expand that full two inches, maybe until two or three, four days after. I think being hung on the wall and having the space to breathe was actually really good for it, so I wouldn't worry too much about getting them out of the box like I thought I had to. Another common downside people talk about is that bugs can get trapped in the wool and have a hard time getting out. And I did actually find a fairly large dead bug in one of my boxes. People also say mice can be attracted to it, but honestly, I had my Havelock wool in my last van for four years. And I never had any of those problems, so maybe it's situational, but it's definitely not happening to everyone or all that often from what I'm actually seeing. So figuring out where I wanted the pins was important because if they were too far apart, it might sag or not hold it up enough, and that, you know, you know is the whole purpose of why I'm doing this method. Now I'm just marking on the wall where one bat will fall so I can place the first set of pins, but after this first wall, I have a good visual understanding of the lengths and just eyeball it. I have the memory of a goldfish. I gotta mark everything, otherwise my anxiety will make me go back and check it. 10 times. Also, before adhering any Frost King over any of the ribs, I made sure to insulate the rib with Havelock first because obviously it's not accessible once it's covered with Frost King. Unfortunately, this was something I forgot when putting up the furring strips on my ceiling. And another thing I will admit is that it may have been dumb to put the pins through the Frost King because I don't want moisture to get trapped behind where the pins poke out of the Frost King, so I taped over each pin on the Frost King with Reflectix tape and I'm hoping that it will stop that problem, but it's just something to think about. We're gonna find out. <laughs> That's the whole motto of this fan build is, we're gonna find out. What's the motto? Nothing, what's the motto with you? <laughs> so now the first wall is pre-insulated with the pins poking through, but at this point, I wasn't sure if it was just going to be stupid and if I was just going to be giving myself a lot of extra work for no reason. I think I love this. The Havelock wool websites and instructions say you can just use tape and that it's fine, but yet here I am thinking I know better than the manufacturer company, but also, like, what if, what if I do? That's an insane thing to say. But <laughs> my twine in my last van build definitely did not hold up well. Even during the install, it was falling and sagging, and I definitely was just trying to throw the walls up quickly. And with tape, Havelock kind of like peels off in layers because it's so maneuverable. Feel free to do what the manufacturer says and I'm sure is tested, but I don't know, personally I like, I, I think that. Last time I was out here with a staple gun, stapling it in here, trying to get it to stay up, packing it in there. I love this, I love this. All right, now comes a part I haven't tested out yet, but obviously we don't actually want this to be the van to be a spike coffin of death. So, it actually comes with these little discs. Oh, oh my God, perfect. This is amazing. I think everyone should do it this way. I think this is incredible and I think we just solved world peace. Well, we didn't solve world peace, we created world peace. That wouldn't make sense. We, we stopped world peace. <sighs> Terrifying. The depth from the wall to the end of the furring strip is three and a half inches. You can tear these like and make it so it's not a full bat, like they tear really easily. So I'll probably do one full bat and then like three fourths of a bat, which in my brain I'm like, am I really gonna take the time to put, peel off one fourth of a thing? Am I that crazy? This is actually starting to expand really well, actually, though. The ceiling is two inches, so I'll just do one layer on the ceiling. So, cool.
So the way I decided how much to use was by measuring the cavity and then one bat of Havelock wool can go in two inches. Unlike the other major types of insulation, Havelock is so easy to mend and shape. In my comparison video, I go over all the different install methods and their pros and their cons, but in my personal opinion, this install is definitely the easiest, simplest, and most straightforward of all the options. With Thinsulate, you have to cut it to size, and if it's wrong, you can't really stretch it. With this, you're just, it's so malleable that you can make it whatever shape you want. So instead of taking all of the time to get rid of that one fourth to make it, you know, equal to the amount of the cavity that I have, I'm just gonna stretch it out more. And by stretching it out, I'm making it longer, but that means I'm also making it thinner. And that's way faster. Ah, oh, perfect. Incredible. I don't, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but I am a neurotic perfectionist and I don't need this to be this extra, but I can't help it. And uh, yeah, I'm a strong believer that your insulation can only be as strong as your heating or your cooling system. And I have insanely incredible high-tech systems that I'm so excited about, but yeah, I still can't help being neurotic about this insulation. insulate this part i gotta make sure to not cover this this is actually a vent and if you cover this or do anything to it that makes it not work the way it's supposed to the back doors actually won't close properly so in my last van even when i put wood over here i actually put like a little hole in the wood the way this would have space to breathe so i'm not going to insulate over this i'm not going to cover it in any way um yeah my dad's watching I have an audience. <laughs> How did I do? What score do I get? Oh, 10.2. Uh, out of what? Out of 100? Out of 10? Oh, oh my goodness, yeah. point 0.2. Yeah, point 0.2. What got me the point 0.2? <laughs> So one more place to look out for that you should not be insulating is these right here. They're called weep holes. There's usually cases over them, but I actually am missing a few. So, you know, that's how it is. You pay $42,000 for a van and you're missing pieces. Um, it's not a big deal. It's, it's really not going to be a problem, but you cannot insulate in here. These are meant for water gets in here and there's like a little hole for it to be able to get out and escape. So for your van, for the health, if you put insulation here are just going to get soaking wet and absorb that water and not be able to go to those weep holes. There's no reason to insulate here. You're going to be totally fine, you know, having some spaces not fully insulated. Insulation is not a savior, okay? This is not like, you know, it's not going to stop everything. So the, I, I know that feeling you're having where you're like, I have to insulate everywhere so much, you know, or else. And that's, not a rational feeling, which is how I feel about most things in this van build. Most feelings I have about it are not rational, um, but I promise, don't insulate there. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> oh, there's a pen in there. I actually cleaned these out in my first video, but obviously living in it for a few months will do that. Just to clarify, you can cover the weep holes with the insulation, just don't shove it inside of it. I went back and forth for a long time on whether or not I should do pre-wiring first or second, and in the end, I did wish I had done it before insulation. I just thought that since I wanted the pre-wiring on the inside of the insulation, so the wires would be insulated too and could be temperature regulated since overheating wires sounds a little bit like a fire hazard, that I should insulate first so they could lay over top and that I would do the big sections of insulation, then the wiring, then come back and put it in all the ribs so the wires would be able to still run easily. But yeah, that was all just silly and overthinking and I definitely could have just installed the wires over the insulation. Welcome to day two, technically kind of day three of insulation. The goal of the day, the big goal is to insulate the ceiling. So let's get started. All right, so despite everything I've said this entire video, we are actually going to <laughs> insulate the ceiling using a staple gun. 
Okay, let me rephrase that. We're not insulating the ceiling with a bunch of staple guns. We are going to put up the insulation with a staple gun because I did not put the pins underneath the Frost King. And as we learned with this wall, the tape just does not stick well enough to the Frost King without falling down. Like this one's still kind of iffy. So I only have to put one layer of Havelock wool on the ceiling because the gap is two inches. So that's perfect. I'll be using this twine I got from Home Depot four years ago that I had left over from my last fan build when I installed all the Havelock wool. So essentially by girl math, I'm pretty sure that means it was free. So fun little story about my last fan build. When I did this, so I did use twine on my entire last fan build to hold up the insulation, which is why I had slight concerns this time. So I'm putting insulation in right now. Basically I tied it and then I'm gonna staple the ropes down and then I'm gonna get rid of like the part that goes on top of the wood. I figured I would just test the staple gun out first. Um, let me show you how it went. And now you're wondering, why are you taking videos? Why aren't you cleaning that up? Because it hurts so much. I was like, I'm sure I really thought I thought it was simple. I was holding it backwards. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you how stupid my mistake was. Um, so I thought this was the end, but lo like, look at that. Look. <laughs> There's an arrow there, an arrow there, an arrow there. An arrow I just stopped playing with this like this. I should not point it towards my face. Like I do not trust myself anymore, but Look it, it's coming together now. So one panel done and um, a bleeding hand. So progress. <laughs> so we're not gonna do that today. Sure. All right, let's get started. So all I'm doing is stapling the twine into the inside edges of the wood, not the top so the staples don't get in the way when I go to install my ceiling. Nailed it. This is a simple task, I swear, but there were so many times when I just missed the twine over and over and had to keep restapling it. Nailed it. I'm trying to keep the staples as low as possible. That way it doesn't pull the Havelock wool above the furring strip, but that's kind of difficult to do. So that's why we're getting this sometimes. <laughs> I'm just placing the twine crisscross all over so the Havelock wool doesn't sag through there until I get the ceiling in. But on this piece, I don't have to worry about much since the sagging will just be down, which is against the ceiling, so less room for error over time. How do I miss it so much? I also insulated the cab area by pulling down my headliner shelf and stuffing it in, which can be super important. I hear it gets super cold up here and condensation can also get pretty crazy. I actually heard of someone trying to pull theirs down and it being frozen with ice. So you may be wondering why I put on safety glasses for a ceiling install of wool, but so many of the Havelock wool fibers were floating down and getting in my eyes and my mouth 
I definitely found a lot of small pieces and fibers all over the van and it really loved to cling to my front seats, so that could definitely be a downside to the wool as well. But my final conundrum was that the big reason I wanted to use these pins was for the sliding door where I had no furring strips to even staple string to even if I wanted to. But the pins were two and a half inches and the cavity was more like one and a half, so I actually took a hammer to the pins and I gave them a hook so they would fit and not be too long. It definitely worked and probably made them safer than the other methods since they were no longer just sharp poking out. At one point on the other wall, I did accidentally stab myself in the head with a pin while trying to insulate a rib. But overall, this method worked really well and cemented why I'm super happy with this method. I've been sliding and slamming the store and the Havelock has gone nowhere. One more thing to check off the list. And there it is, the completed insulation install. And well, technically, you're actually also seeing it with a completed pre-wiring install. And that will definitely be one of my next van build videos, so be sure to subscribe if you want to keep up with the van build, and thanks for watching.